Hi and welcome to a Calculus 1 video on special limits and we will take a look at these limits and see how we can manipulate trig expressions so we can use these two special limits that I'm about to show you. This is not a video that will prove these limits to you. So you may see these two limits that I have highlighted in both yellow and green whether you're talking about L'Hopital's rule maybe later in a Calc 1 course or perhaps right when you learn trig differentiation fairly early on in your derivative experience. So limit as x approaches 0 here in the yellow of sine of x over x, that limit is defined to be 1. Again, not proving it to you, we're just going to see how that applies to our problems. And the reciprocal of that expression is true as well. Limit as x approaches 0 of we can reciprocate this, so x over sine of x is also 1. Then we have in green, limit as x approaches 0 of 1 minus cosine x all over x. That limit is defined to be 0. So what we're going to try to do is to take three problems that we were given, and we're going to try to manipulate them so that we can use these two limits that I've shown you. Okay, so I want to keep the limits on the screen so I can keep referencing whether it's the yellow limit that we're talking about or this green limit here. So the first question is going to ask me limit as x approaches 0, which is very important because if my limit doesn't approach 0, then neither one of these green or yellow limits would, would really work here. And I'm looking at this trig expression cosine of x minus 1 all over sine of x. And the first thing that I see is in thinking about that yellow derivative that I have highlighted above, or excuse me, this yellow limit that I have highlighted above, and I see that if I could just multiply by, for example, x over x, then part of this is already found for me because here is the limit as x approaches 0 of x over sine of x. And that portion of the limit is known to be a 1. And so now it's really like having this multiplicative identity of 1 within this limit, so I don't need to write that down. But I do have limit as x approaches 0 of cosine x minus 1 all over x left over. Again, I'm choosing to multiply by x over x so that I could use that yellow highlighted limit above. You can multiply by whatever you want as long as it's a factor of 1. So now I look and say how is this related to either the yellow, right, the yellow limit above or this green limit above? Well, it's a lot closer to this green limit because first of all it uses cosine and there's two terms in the numerator. Right? So this is much closer to the green. How are these two related? How is my problem now related to this green limit? Well, I see again that if I multiply this by negative 1 over negative 1, my new limit will look really, really helpful to me. Because if I distributed this negative 1, and most of us write the positive term first, so this positive 1 is usually written first, and then this cosine will turn negative, right? Just changes the sign. And negative 1x, or you could just write it as negative x, whatever you're more comfortable with. That limit, as x approaches 0, is 0. So whether you have a negative 0 or a positive 0 doesn't matter, because we learned a limit property a long time ago that this constant coefficient could be factored out front. So I could be asking this question right here. Right, so the negative could be out front. Well, negative 0 is still just 0. So this limit turned out to be 0. So let's take a look at the next one. And again, I'm going to try to leave it so that the yellow and green highlighted limits are visible. Okay, so I still have limit as x approaches 0. Again, double check, right? And then it's sine of x all over x plus tangent x. I don't have either limit dealing with tangent, so the first thing that I'm going to do is rewrite this without the tangent. I'm going to write it with sine over cosine. And now, again, any chance I have at sine x over x, I'm going to do it. Be very cautious. I'm going to highlight something. That limit is not 1. It is not a factor, sine x over x, of everything else. That is being added to other terms. So if you can factor it out, then sure, you can factor out that limit value, but not when it's, you know, adding to other terms there in that denominator. But 
Maybe you see that if I multiply this part by x over x, now I see right here I have a factor of sine x over x, and that part will turn into a 1. So let me rewrite what I have now. Still limit as x approaches 0. That's a very, very important part. Sine x over x plus, well, I have an x left in my numerator there, right, right here. And in that denominator of that fraction is just a cosine x. So I absolutely have a complex fraction here that I'm working with. And what I can see here is that I still have this sine of x in the numerator. Okay, well, if it was just sine of x over x, then I could replace that with a 1 if it's a factor of everything. So let's see, if I could factor out an x in the denominator, then maybe I would be in business. So I can do that. Limit as x approaches 0 of, and I'm going to actually write it like that, sine x over x, because that leaves a 1 in the numerator, right, because I have factored out that sine x, so the multiplicative identity is still there of 1. And then factor an x out of the denominator, so that leaves a 1 for the first term, plus 1 over cosine x for the second term in that denominator. And again, don't worry too much about the whole thing. Just sort of focus on the one piece that you're trying to work with at a time. So again, now I know limit as x approaches 0, sine x over x, that part gives me 1. I don't need to write 1 times, so I'm just going to scratch it out, but you certainly could. So I have limit as x approaches 0 of just 1 over 1 plus 1 over cosine x. And I do absolutely recommend writing 1 over cosine x. Again, none of our limits have secants in them, so I wouldn't necessarily write secant at this point. I also think you do your computation better with sines and cosines. So before you get too caught up with limits here, go ahead and try to substitute in a 0. Because, again, I need something to be negative in order for this green limit to work. I have nothing negative in this limit right now. So even if I'm multiplied by a negative, it's going to make more than one term negative, and that's not what I want. So just try to substitute. That's what you're always trying to really do when you're evaluating a limit anyway, is get to the point where you've manipulated the algebra or trig enough to where you can just do direct substitution. So in place of x, I'm going to put a 0. And cosine of 0 is 1. So this is really just 1 over 1 plus 1, or 1 half. Notice when I'm evaluating, putting in or substituting in 0 for x, at this step right here, I no longer have the limit because I'm now evaluating what that limit is. It is also important to note that all of these limits from the beginning are turning out to be 0 over 0, which I'll show you in the next problem. Okay, so on this third and last problem, let's go ahead and investigate, you know, what does happen if I just try to substitute in 0 from the beginning? 7 times 0 is 0, so I have sine of 0 over 4 times 0, which is 0. And we should recognize sine of 0 to be 0, so I do get 0 over 0, which hopefully we have learned is called indeterminate. It's not necessarily undefined. It's indeterminate, which basically means I can't determine it. And so we need to use our calculus to help us out and figure out what the value will become. So you might find many times throughout these limits you're getting 0 over 0. That means you need to keep going with your algebraic or trigonometric manipulation. You're just trying to rewrite the problem. All right, so if I look at this last one here, how can I rewrite it? Well, first of all, I want to move this 4 over. I can't do anything with the 7 because that's a part of my angle right now. So I'm going to move this 1 fourth. So it's the same as 1 fourth times the limit as x approaches 0 of sine of 7x all over x, okay? That is exactly equivalent by our limit properties. Okay, well, I'm going to highlight two things here that must match. If I want to go ahead and use that yellow limit that I've highlighted above, because again, 
This looks like sine x over x, doesn't it? Well, the x or the angle of sine has to match. So I'm going to go ahead and make that note right here. Must match. Okay, this has to be the same. So whatever my angle is of sine has to be the term that is in my denominator. Okay, well I can easily manipulate that because I can multiply by a seven over seven. Remember, we can multiply as long as we're multiplying by a factor of one by whatever we're going to need in the problem. I think this is the, the part where students are a little bit uncomfortable because you haven't had to manipulate it where you put in whatever you want. Well again, as long as you're multiplying by a factor of one, you're going to make this convenient for you. So now I'll move this seven in my numerator out front. So I have seven fourths times limit as x approaches zero, and if you wanted to use brackets instead of the dot, you certainly could, of sine of seven x all over seven x. And see now my angle matches that denominator's term, so now that limit is defined to be one as long as that angle matches that denominator in that yellow limit up above, that limit is defined to be one. So this limit is defined to be one, so then I really just have seven fourths times one, or seven fourths. So again, I hope you found this video on special limits helpful. Really what you have to be more comfortable with when you're using the special limits is manipulating your original trig expression, which the more practice you have with trig identities, the better that typically goes. Thanks for watching. I hope you found it helpful.